Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the PMP Beast. This is a very interesting, very large knife from PMP. Um, a lot of design inspiration from Medford, as you can see on this one. But we'll go ahead and take a look. I'll tell you what I like, what I'm neutral towards, and what I dislike about the PMP Beast. Alright, before we jump into any of that, let's do a very quick size comparison. Go ahead and move the PMP Beast up here. And we'll go ahead and start with the Victorinox Classic, which is minuscule compared to this thing. Actually, you could probably fit this through the scales. Not quite. It's very close. Oh, no, I, I can get about halfway. Halfway through the scales of the PMP Beast. So there's a massive size difference there. Let's go ahead and move on to something a little bit larger, still pretty small though, the Spyderco Dragonfly. So uh, again, this knife is excruciatingly large. We'll go ahead and uh, move that down here. And I'll bring out my current favorite everyday carry knife, which is the Boker Urban Trapper Petite. A little bit longer than the Dragonfly, but still nothing compared to this enormous knife up here. And we'll go ahead and bring out something a bit, some of you may have with you actually, a um, Boker Mini Quaken. This is the brass and micarta version from Blade HQ. Now overall length is getting a little closer, but it's still not, you know, still nowhere close to the size of this thing. And for one last size comparison, we'll bring out my other longest knife that I have here. This is the Booze Blade Smoke. Again, it's it's close to the length, but it's not close to the width, and nothing I really have is. Um, this knife is enormous, and I will definitely go over that and uh, mention that in just a moment. All right, on to what I like about it. So first up, and one of the biggest surprises for me was the ergonomics. Um, this knife, at least for my hand, fits perfectly. My hands fit just enough of that that cutout space there and it's it's great actually um, that entire cutout space is about the size of the Boker Quaken or Mini Quaken um, grip area but it's a it's a bit more ergonomic feeling than that is <laughs> um, just the size the thickness of it it feels it feels really good in my hand um, if you have smaller hands it may be a bit of an issue um, if you have larger hands you may be having to grip down here. I don't know anyone who has hands that big, but you know. But for my hands it it fits pretty well right here. I really, really like it honestly. And I I could cut with this for a very, very long time if it cut. Um next up, the size. The size, I actually don't mind it. Um as as far as you know the the design. I, I like the design. I like the size of the knife. There are a few aspects of it that I don't like, but as far as like length and uh, width, I really don't. I don't mind it. Um, it works well. I think the design's very striking. Again, a bit reminiscent of Medford, but they did good on this one. I really like the clip as well. Now, I did pick this knife up secondhand, so you can see some flame anodizing on the pocket clip. But the pocket clip's nice and tall. Um, it fits over jeans just fine. Slips right down onto them. It has a good bit of ramp. Um, it's not the best for slipping onto uh, looser jeans, but if your jeans are a bit tighter against your leg, it won't cause any issues and it can slip in just fine if you even carry this thing in your pocket. The lock bar insert on this is very nice touch as well. So you can see there, there is a steel lock bar insert. And I'm assuming that's to help with lock stick. I don't think you would want lock stick on this knife. I think that'd be very, very, very unpleasant. And the lock up on this is good as well. It comes up to about 40% or so, which you can see there. And it feels very, very sturdy. I don't have any worry of this closing on me or anything like that. The build quality on this is nice. It feels like a like a brick. You know, it's it's it just feels durable. I this is the one knife. I would not be scared to go you know, shove through a car door or whatever in the hell people do with knives this big. This 
it feels very well built, very robust, and it shakes the table every time I open it, just to give you a, a sense of how large this thing is. But it's built very, very well. It's very tank-like, and you can definitely tell it the second you pick it up. The thumb studs are a nice touch, too. I really like all this uh, semi-polished hardware on, on the entire knife. It kind of complements it a bit. And the thumb studs are a nice touch. I like them. I know some people, um, like Frankie and Bird, <laughs> who didn't like them, which is fine. I, I can understand why, and I'll go over that in a bit. But for me, honestly, it, it works. I don't have any issues deploying the knife with them now. I, I did before, and we'll touch on that. But the thumb studs work pretty well for me. They are pretty tall, if that bothers you at all. And they're smooth. There's no texturing on these things whatsoever. I don't think you need it because of how big they are, but there's no texturing on them, in case that's what you're wondering. This fuller here is very nice as well. You can also open it this way. You can open it two-hand. Or, if you can, you can kind of do a pinch grip and then open the wrist while you do with your thumb using that fuller or the side of the thumb stud, whatever works for you. And these thumb studs are removable if you'd prefer to stick with just the fuller. As you may have noticed here on the closing and stuff, this knife looks pretty smooth, and it is, you know? It's, it's a very, very smooth knife. Not that it really has a choice because this blade is ridiculously heavy. And it, it will fall shut with even the slightest urging. Speaking of the blade, this hollow ground portion right here, the it's a compound grind, but the, but the primary one right here, is pretty nice. You know, it's, it's a nice hollow grind. I know it's going to be a bit hard to see here. But you can kind of see it scooping up there. The blade stock's super, super thick, but the hollow grind here is very, very nice, and it does actually work pretty well for cutting. The materials on this knife are pretty decent as well. You're looking at D2 steel, and this blade is coated, so that will help with the rust. And then for the titanium, it's like 4C something. It's not the um, 6LV4 or whatever the hell that you're used to. This is a different titanium alloy. A little bit lower grade, but it's still titanium and it's not that bad. This could definitely be heavier, heavier if they'd done this in steel. On to the neutral. Only a couple things here. First thing up is the price. This knife, when it came out, was like $300 or something. Or $350, something like that. That's high. That's really high. That's really, really high. Um, if you could pick this knife up for like $150, $200, and it's in decent condition, go ahead and grab it. I, I paid $100 uh, for this one, and I think I got a, a pretty decent deal as far as like a novelty item goes. <laughs> but, you know, at $250, $350, that's just, that's just a little too high for this. And the last thing on the neutral list is the branding. Very minimal, but I'm not a big fan of it. Um, so Beast D2, that really doesn't bother me, to be honest. There's no branding on this side of the blade whatsoever, just that. The part of the branding that bothers me is this giant PMP Knives logo on the clip. And I say giant because of the size of this knife. This logo is probably two inches long, and it's that's crazy. That's just a little bit much. I'm, I'm glad they kept this part of the blade bare, but I think they could have pulled it back. Maybe just done the logo on the clip or something like that, and made the knife a little bit more appealing. On to the dislike. So since we have the blade right up front and center here, so we'll talk about it. So, as I mentioned, this hollow ground portion cuts just fine. However, this flat ground portion is terrible. This is a horrible, horrible cutting uh, tool when you're using this this front work portion here. And you can see how thick that is. That's, that's not a joke. That's ridiculous. This tip is the one knife tip I own that I would not be afraid to pry with. I wouldn't do it, but, you know, I don't think you'd really break anything. The tip is also not sharp. This whole portion up here actually is just not sharp. I'm actually going to try to resharpen it here after this video, but it's this whole part is dull. This down here is fine. Cuts pretty well. This part is trash. It's this this whole frontward. I don't know why the hell they didn't just pull this hollow grind all the way up through here. I think the compound grind was a big mistake. It made this knife a lot less useful than it already was. <laughs> and it's you know already kind of fighting to even make sense. But this this flat ground part is just garbage. I hate it. That's, I just, I can't stand that freaking thing. 
it's pointless and it detracts from the knife. That makes opening boxes and stuff like this, which let's be honest, is the most common thing you do with your knife. It it can't do it. It it fights so hard to try to punch through tape. It's not even funny. It it just can't. Now breaking down cardboard, sure. When you're using this part, anything piercing, punching into a bag, anything like that, this is going to be next to useless for. So I mentioned the thumb studs earlier, and that I like them, and that is true. When the action is dialed in. When it is not and the detent, the detent is stiff, these thumb studs, you can try to open them. They will fire, but if you slip or something, your finger's going to hurt like hell. Um, my finger was bruised from using this knife for the first few days until I took it down and adjusted it. And it just, it was horrible. The, these thumb studs are great, but with how large this blade is and how much material you're moving when you you know flick it open if you misfire it's going to hurt I'm, I'm not exaggerating it's going to hurt it's it my finger was very very sore so just be careful um, especially when you first get this knife if it's not broken in it's going to be hard on you all right so the weight on this i don't know how much you think this weighs just by looking at it you know, there's some lightning pockets in the titanium and stuff like that you can kind of see there that have been milled out. Uh, this thing still comes in at 14 ounces, so almost a pound. This is very, 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 very heavy. Each of these scales are a fifth of an inch thick. It's, it's crazy. So overall width, by the way, if you're curious, is roughly 0 .0, it's 0.8 inches. So it's, it's getting really, really close to an inch. And just to show you here, um, a more common thickness knife compared to it, it's a lot. This is, this is a big, heavy, large knife. That weight and that thickness means that this is, it sucks in your pocket. The, the blade itself, just the blade stock, is 0.35 inches. So over a third of an inch on the blade stock. That's ridiculous. This knife... Is it sucks in your pocket? I don't know what kind of pants you'd have to be wearing to to be okay with having this sitting to the side of your pocket, but mm -mm, it does not work for me. It's it's not very good at all. Speaking of not good, let's go ahead and go on to the tolerances. So if you watched my disassembly video, you may know this already. This disassembly took a very long time, and that's for a couple reasons. One, the detent is not dialed in by the pivot so much as it is the stop pin. If you tighten down the stop pin too much, this blade will not move. I don't know why they designed it like that, but it sucks. The stop pin has to be borderline loose for you to be able to get this blade to move. Um, I found a very good spot, and I don't plan on disassembling it anytime soon. So, I'm trying to keep it dialed in there. Another thing, it was very difficult to get this backspacer removed, or to even separate the scales. So, once you take out the blade, at least on my model, once you take out the blade or remove the pivot, all that great stuff, the scales still won't come apart. So what I do is I take my Leatherman Scale Tool, I wrap some cloth around it, a shirt or microfiber cloth, whatever, take it, push it in, and twist it, and it'll pop the scales open. But as far as disassembling this entirely by hand with just a screwdriver, it's not going to work. This thing, the, the tolerances on it are trash. They, It seems like they barely fit everything together, and they just shipped it out the door. That's really annoying, and if you had spent $250, $300 on this knife, you'd be pretty pissed off by that. I don't care how big it is. It's using you know, decent materials, but that's it. They're decent. They're not that good. You're not paying for 6ALV4 titanium. You're not paying for you know, M390, M4. You're paying for D2 and a much cheaper titanium alloy. You expect the fit and finish to be damn good at $350 pick it up you need to work on this this is ridiculous you you can't keep getting away with this shit this is it's not going to work because of the weight of this thing the rest of it has to be good for it to even be plausible so an oversized poorly built gargantuan heavy knife no one is going to love this i'm just going to say that especially not at the original asking price. All right, rant over. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and talk about some more fit and finish issues. 
So this nice little backspacer here actually comes up into a V shape, probably to show off the centering, which would be great if the centering were dead on. I've tried adjusting this. I cannot get it any more over this way without pushing it. I can only get it more over this way. You know, out of curiosity, I tried to find if anyone else's PMP beasts had have this issue. And yes, they all have, literally all of them that I've seen. None of them have come out centered. That's really, really annoying that you're going to put this here in this V-shape to show off centering and then have your knife come out uncentered. It looks stupid. It looks pointless. They should have just made it flat because it looks dumb. And every time you look at this knife, you'll see that it's off-centered by not just a little bit, but a pretty freaking good chunk. These scales are so large that you can very easily s slide your finger into them, which is, for the most part, fine. The blade dips down a little bit, but when, as you get up here towards the sharpening choil, if you're reaching down to your pocket and your pinky glances right there, if, if it's sharp, which it's not, <laughs> if it was sharp, if you had just sharpened it, you'd slice your pinky open very, very easily. And a good bit, too. It's not like it's just kind of sort of there. You, you can really, really do some damage with that. Speaking of the sharpening choil, last thing I promise. It's not good. Um, they missed it. You can see they they should have brought it up just a little bit or sharpened down just a little bit more. It's not good. And you can see a small recurve starting to form right there. That's not ideal. So if you get this knife, a lot of things to watch out for. And just keep in mind, it's probably going to be more of a novelty than anything. All right, on to the conclusion. So what do I think about this knife? Well, I think it's interesting. The, the idea, the concept of it is very interesting. Execution-wise, it sucks. The Again, the design is good. You know, there's, there's some things I would tweak, like the... The flat grind, the compound grind, I, I would fix that. A few other things, but to be honest, the execution is really what kills this knife. It just doesn't work. Poor fit and finish, you know, poor tolerances, it, it kills it. It takes it from something very nice and, and still novelty to something crappy and novelty. Like, to be honest, this seems like something you could pick up at a flea market for 40 bucks. If if you weren't into knives, this would look stupid to you. And to be honest, I'm into knives and it looks stupid to me, which is partially why I have it, just because how stupid it is. But just keep in mind, you're not getting a, a tool here. You're getting a toy. It's what you're paying for. No one is going to carry this around and use it for everyday stuff. It's just not practical in no situation no one and if you think you do or you're going to you're crazy get one put it in your pocket carry around a one pound knife for a few days with a third of an inch thick blade stock and you tell me how useful it is but as a toy it's pretty interesting so if you're buying this as a knife you're looking at it wrong buy it as a novelty thanks for tuning in guys hope you all have a wonderful day feel free to check out my other videos and subscribe if you'd like and thanks for tuning in, and bye.